What's going on, everyone? Welcome back or to the Moto 411. The 2024 Monster Energy AMA Supercross season is fast approaching its end. And in the 450 class, we have three riders who have risen to the occasion and are considered in this title fight. Those three riders are obviously Jet Lawrence, Cooper Webb, and Chase Sexton. Before I get into some of my thoughts on this, I'm curious as to what you all think about this. Who do you think among those three is going to end up taking the crown at the end of the season? We've got Jet, who has quite a bit of a lead ahead of Coop, and then Chase, who's even farther back. But as you guys know, this is racing and anything can happen. So leave your thoughts down below in the comments of who do you think is going to rise to the occasion and uh, walk away with this championship. Now let's get into the video. Let's talk about Cooper Webb for a minute. I have to give him some credit because prior to the season starting, I did not have him as being a title favorite. Uh, after his switch from KTM to Yamaha, I was pretty much, I almost wrote him off, to be honest with you. Just in the way he was riding in the few outdoor rounds that he rode, and then at the Paris Supercross in the off season, I, I was not... I was not stoked on how Coop was riding, but he made me eat my words. Even from A1, he was on point, and he's had his ups and downs here and there during the season, but for the most part, Cooper Webb has been quite consistent, and he's been a, an upfront battling guy for the majority of this season, and it shows with him being only 16 points behind Jet. Coop is one of the few people this season that has shown he has the speed to, to push through the pack if he gets a bad start. If he's feeling good on, on any given night, say he gets a bad gate drop, doesn't come out the gate in a very good position into that first corner, Coop is capable of pushing through the pack. He is capable of slicing through the riders and moving up towards the front of the pack even if he gets a bad start because that's just who he is. That's the speed that he's coming with this season, and he's just been phenomenal so far. Second only to Jet Lawrence, of course. So, Coop is a man on a mission. I'm going to give the man his flowers. He deserves it. He's been on point this whole season and just absolutely stoked for Cooper Webb. And I'm happy to see that he's got this, this pace this far into his career. He's still battling up front. And I, I expect to see a, at least a few more years of Cooper Webb uh, being a title threat and battling at the top of the pack. If I'm going to be real with you guys, I think Jet's still going to win the championship. But that's not to say that Cooper Webb can't make it happen if things do get interesting if there's a mechanical if there's a crash whatever may happen coop is in range to potentially take this away from jet if things get get spicy now let's talk about sexton for a minute he is still only 23 points behind jet which means chase is still within one race so if jet has a mechanical if he dnfs chase will be right there up to the front with coop a few points behind coop so chase also still has a chance to take this championship away from jet if things do get interesting now i'll tell you right now I feel like had Chase switched to KTM last season and had a full year to get used to the bike, get used to the bike setup, get used to the way it feels, I feel like Chase would probably be second or even first in this championship right now, and he would have had much more to give Jet in terms of battling him throughout the races this season. When you make such a big switch of uh, a manufacturer change like that after racing nearly your entire career on one specific manufacturer, in Chase's case, that was Honda, it takes a lot of more time than just a couple months to find the right setup for the bike to find you know to get used to it to become one with the bike so to speak so I feel like if Chase had more time to get used to that bike we would have seen much more from him this season this makes me very excited to see how Chase will do next year because I still feel like even with the outdoors coming up I, I don't feel like I, th I think he needs a whole a good season under his belt on this new new machine new factory team before we can really see Chase back to that insane speed that he had last year where you guys know he qualified fastest nearly every single race um and i know jet was not in the 450 class at the, for supercross last year so that that is one reason why but regardless you can't even argue the fact that chase was consistently faster last year than he has been this year now lastly i just want to talk about tomac for a minute I know myself and many other people expected much more from him this season, regardless of the fact that he did have that catastrophic injury last season. And I mean, this is Eli Tomac we're talking about. This man is in the history books already as one of the greatest all-time to ever do it in this sport. So it has definitely been a bummer to see his performance this year being so subpar for what we would expect his standards to be. But I think it just goes to show that when you spend that much time off the bike, that much time not racing, I mean, injuries really can change a person's career and the trajectory of their career in a split second, just like that. And, you know, regardless of whether or not Eli returns to racing next year, I highly doubt he will. I, I just don't think we're going to see 
him ever at the same caliber that he was before the Achilles. That's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate all of you who support the channel continuously, and we hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Hello, this is your editor, Mrs. Moto411. I thank you all for making it this far in the video. Um, if, for those of you that are celebrating this weekend, enjoy your holiday, be safe, and take care.